everybody and welcome back to Evil Ted Live, which I do on my live stream, twitch.tv slash Evil Ted Smith, every other Monday and Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. In today's episode, uh, my kids are huge fans of the show My Hero Academia, and my youngest is a big fan of Overhaul, who's a new villain in the show. So in today's episode, we're going to make the Overhaul mask, which is like a, kind of like a plague doctor mask. Those patterns will be available in my shop. Click on the link below, download the patterns, and let's build this bad boy together. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. All right, here are the patterns. Uh, again, this is the uh, the mask. This is the right and the left, just for flipping the bottom, the nose detail, and little screw detail, and some piping, which we can do that out of uh, two millimeter foam. So let's go ahead and put that aside for now. Let's focus on our main parts. These are gonna be done out of six millimeter foam. To save time, I went ahead and traced them out. Ta-da! Of course, if you guys don't recognize this, this is uh, the Punish Props knife. Now what we're gonna do, cut these heads out first, like this. Separate them. There we go. On these edges, we're gonna cut them at a slight angle. And again, I always like to have my sharpener with me. Make sure my blade's nice and sharp. All right, excellent. Now when cutting, as you guys can see, I always like to start with the blade touching the table. So the tip is touching the table. I come in at an angle and let the blade do the work. At the point where you get up here to the, uh, the side of the mask, I turn the bevel out and go 90. These pieces back here, I want to keep them 90. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that up straight up and down. Like that. Let's go ahead and just do this bevel here too, real quick. Like that. There we go. Now, for cutting the 90, I like to use an X Acto blade. There's just some tight little curls in here. So we go ahead and just take the knife, follow the edge, like so. All right, all the parts are cut out. Got my bevels now. Before we start to do any assembly, uh, what I like to do is these edges, for a fact, I know I'm going to, um, I'm gonna round these off. So I got my rotary tool with my uh, my stone bit on here. You guys can see that. It's a nice little uh, stone bit rounding the edge. And I find it's easier to do all this stuff while it's flat. All right, the two millimeter parts are all cut out and run of the edges. Let's move on to the uh, two millimeter. This is gonna be the um, the additional nose detail. Again, great stuff with the craft knife. Got this part cut out. Now we're gonna move on to the, um, right at the same time, I went ahead and just cut out the uh, thinner trim parts and the tip. What we do before assembly, I always like to take the stone bit and soften the edges a little bit. But before we do that, let's go ahead and cut out the uh, side hole vent detail, little gear. A little technique I like to do for this. The side detail for the mask it's like, looks like a little bit of a gear, which to make sure it stays uh, sturdy and easy to trace, I spray mount the paper onto poster board and take a craft knife and cut it out, which just makes it a lot easier to trace. Now I'm gonna use a ballpoint pen on uh, this uh, two millimeter foam. And I have my circle template and I got the circle that this guy falls into just to make sure I stay, I just find it's a lot easier to stay on track when you do this. So just make the circle like so. All right, now it's trace. I go and take a pair of scissors, small ones it is. All right, now. Before I go through the trouble of cutting all that details out, I'd like to take a piece of scrap foam because I'm going to cut the circle out. And I always find it's easy to cut the circle out while it's a little bit more of a solid piece. So I take my piece of tubing. I like to use a foam base, therefore, when it goes all the way through, get a nice clean cut. Cut that in the center. Like so. There you go. Cut that. Now, with my sharp craft knife with a brand new blade, I'm going to take the edges first. Cut. 
All right. And there it is. Now I just gotta do this four more times. Brass tube, again, foam as a base, take your sharp tube, and just start cutting. Like so. Now for the additional strips we have here. Um, I always like the bevel the edges. Now these guys, I'm going to make them look like stitching. I wanna round these edges off. And some people have uh, difficulties doing this, but I'm gonna show you a little trick on how I like to take these edges down very easily. All right, of course we have the uh, the stone bit here. Uh, I like the stone bit because the sanding drum will remove it too quickly. You just wanna just take the edges down. Just wanna make them soft enough. So what I like to do is on the edges first, very carefully, Just do the edge like this. And then, once you do that, you hold and put a tension between it. So you don't have to you just hold it like this and then drag it down very lightly. Just like that. All right, guys, now you can see we have all the two millimeter parts cut out. I got my four of those, got the ruby details for this and our trim piece has all been dribbled ready to go. So now let's go ahead and do some gluing and assembly. So let's start with the six millimeter parts. These holes for the details. Also, when you're wearing this mask, I'm gonna make it easy to breathe. So we're gonna go and take a brass tube. Again, a lot easier to do this stuff when it's flat. All right, excellent. Start putting glue on our edges. Everybody has different ways of applying glue. Some people have the glue bottle, which the glue bottle is a great way to apply glue quickly. Um, you can definitely do it that way. Uh, I have a glue pot. I've had it for so long, I've gotten used to it. But granted, I used to sell these links for these and people find out they're very expensive and I apologize because when I bought these, they were $35. Now they're like up to $50. It's just ridiculous how expensive they've gotten. But if you have a, there's a video I put, and you can have a link for it below the video. It's called How to Make a Poor Man Glue Pot. Kind of adhesive dries pretty quickly, but I like to speed it up a little bit with a hair dryer. All right, they're nice and dry. Now our next step is to line them up. I like to start with the, uh, the tip first, just on the edge. And all right, got these two halves together. Now for the bottom, start with one side, line them up, line them up, looking good. Keeping track of those marks when you do it. See, the mask is now slowly coming together. Now it's assembled, I take my uh, my rotary tool with a stone bit. I'm just gonna soften the, the seams a little bit. I like to get a piece of cardboard so I can brush the glue out, but I don't wanna put any on my table. So now I have a piece of cardboard that allows me to kind of apply the glue, but I'm able to kind of Make sure it gets on nice and thin. Cause you don't have to go too crazy with the two millimeter foam cause it's not gonna fight you that much. It's super thin and it'll lay down very easily. So now we're going to apply the detail. Now I find it's great just to start right, line it up. Uh, so make sure you guys can see this. Smack dab right in the front. That's like that. Now what I like to do is on these edges, I don't I kept these edges sharp. Usually I uh, um would round these edges off, but I kind of thought since this is like a piece of metal that's been put on the mask, I'm gonna leave it sharp. But I'm definitely gonna take the uh, stone bit and round these edges a little bit more into them. Kind of make this part and the edge of the mask look more like one. Kind of soften this edge up just a little bit. Uh, kind of adhesive to our uh, strips. These are the same thing. We're going to do um, this detail. Starts from the back here. And you see these little markings which I put in the pattern. This is your mark to know where to end. So you're going to basically run up and wrap the foam and follow this edge.
And again, this is going to go just on the edge. Like that, you run along the edge. And then you follow the sharpie line. You want to go over the sharpie. Make sure you do not go past. Go right there like this. See that? I'm sticking it down. Let's cut this right here. And we'll start the other end over here. Same drill. All right, lines up on the top with a little notch. Cut it. Got that, line it up. See, a little bit long, that's okay. That's the cool thing about it, you can just go back here with a knife. All right, I have some additional, have my additional details I'm going to add. Look at our foam gears going to stick on the side. And we're going to do that with super glue. And just dab glue. Just where I need it. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Awesome. <clears throat> okay, we got the gears on. Let's move on to the rivet detail. Oops. Yeah, super glue is great for the uh, little additional details. All right, this looks great. Uh, our next step is we want to, on the actual mask, this is stitching. So to create the illusion of stitching, I'm going to take a wood burner. I'm going to burn little lines into it. So I'm going to have to turn the fan on, guys. I took put my mask on and turn the fan because. Uh, you'll hear a little bit of noise, and that's the fan blowing off camera, so I don't breathe the fumes. Okay, the overhaul mask is really coming together. We just got done doing the wood burning stitching. That's done. So the next step is to seal it, and we're going to use uh, Creature Cast. This is Creature Cast rubber. This is going to be the semi rigid. What I like about this stuff, it's water thin. Um, I'm gonna shake it up real quick. It is non-toxic, but I like to put the gloves on just because this stuff sticks really good. Now, most of the times with foam, when I'm putting something on it, sometimes if it's a rubber, I like to put like contact adhesive on the foam. But with Creature Cast, that is not necessary. Creature Cast, in its own right, sticks to the foam all by itself. You don't really need to give it any help at all. Hmm, you know something, I just realized something. Before we go any further on this, hold on. I get excited when I start building stuff and I kind of forget things. Uh, on the mask, I like this, but you know what I want is on the, on the ridge where the nose is, I would like to heat this up a little bit and curl this nose up. So, got my heat board. So we're just going to, uh, I want to heat this spot up real quick. I take it like this. I just want to curl it up like this from the nose because it kind of give that illusion that this is made out of leather. So I want to have that kind of peak up around the nose. The other thing great about Creature Cast is that this is semi rigid, so you don't have to put a lot on. I'm just going to put one thin layer on this to seal the foam and then go from this to paint because the foam is dense enough as it is. It's, it's the TNT EVA six millimeter foam. It's really dense, so I'm just going to. Uh, there's not a lot of pores to fill up. Now I just realized something. There's some holes. You guys can see in there. I just take a little bit of a, a Q-tip right here and put some Creature Cast in it. Kind of just wet the inside. The thing I want to watch out for is I don't want to have any too heavy. I want to make sure that the, uh, there's no drips. So I'm going to thin out. Take the brush and I want to thin out the where these gears are, so they don't get filled in. I want those guys to really stand out. These guys to pop. Now it's completely dry, looks great. Uh, we're gonna start to put a base coat on this. Uh, the base color of this mask is red, but I'm gonna go ahead and speed things up a little bit. I'm gonna use the, uh, my Rust-Oleum 2X Red. This stuff, uh, is great. It takes a little bit longer to dry, but it's really tough when it does, and it's designed for plastic, so it does flex. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and shake this can up. I'm gonna go over to the spray booth and put a red coat on this. There it is. Uh, that red 2X, I really like again. Enamel base, it's on here, it's solid, nice and dry. So we let this dry overnight, it's good to go. So our next step is to start painting. Now we know for a fact this is gonna be gold. I'm gonna paint these guys yellow. And this edge, I wanna do black. So since I'm holding this, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the black first. So of course I got me some uh, black acrylic. This is Nova, but she's got a good Mars black acrylic. And we're gonna just black all this out. So I found this is a um, <clears throat> bright yellow acrylic. I always find the biggest problem with yellow is that uh, as bright as it is, it's always a little semi-transparent, so it probably takes more than one coat to do. But, oh, it looks pretty good. There you go. So we're just gonna do this first. The reason I do the edges first, it's just because it's easier to see where you're at, what you're doing, because when you paint the whole thing gold, it's kind of a pain to try to do it when the top part's already painted. So it's just good to do the inside edge first. All right, the mask is all dry. Now the next step is to age it. I got a piece of uh, my cardboard. I have my, um, this is um, burnt sienna. And this is oil paint, this is burnt sienna oil. I'm gonna hit it with some black. Now I'm not gonna go crazy in the black, just a little bit. A little bit of black on it. I like the oil paints because it just they just fade and bleed beautifully and kind of gives it a little bit of a natural aging dry brush. Fade it out a little bit. And now I'm gonna wipe off the excess. Ah, it looks so great. All right, it's all aged. Looks great. Now we're going to put on these straps. I went ahead and measured the. Uh, uh, Heather's head for the straps, this is the elastic straps. Now, you could probably put snaps and things on them, but I just, I think it's just easy enough just to hot glue some straps on. I'm gonna dead a little bit of hot glue, but I have to make some, some foam scraps, so when I go to put the hot glue on the strap, I do not burn my finger. And you notice I didn't seal it from behind. I'm just gonna keep this as raw foam. Just go down some hot glue. I'm gonna line up the strap like so and then get a uh, piece of foam, push down like that. Let that cool for a second before we move on. Well, there it is. Overhaul mask painted, aged, and the straps. We are good to go. This, <laughs> this came out looking awesome. Da -da! There you go again. <laughs> this came out looking great. Good everybody, if you would like to have one of these, you can. Uh, the overhaul mask uh, is listed just below the video. Click on the link and that will take you to my website, eviltedsmith.com. Now that you have this pattern available, I have numerous patterns as well. If you guys are into cosplay, definitely get into it. It's a blast, it's fun, making stuff. If this is your first time watching, don't forget to click the button subscribe. This video is done from my live stream I do on twitch.tv slash eviltedsmith every other Monday and Tuesday from 9 a.m to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you back next time right here on Evil Dead Live.